Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Ocean Robbins, founder, co-founder of Food Revolution Network with my dad and colleague, John Robbins. And we are welcoming you now to this whole life action hour. This is the third in a series of free action hours being presented this week. Third and final one in this series, we already heard from Drs. Dean and Ayesha Sherzai on brain health. And we had a fascinating conversation with Dr. Michael Greger on how you can eat to beat chronic disease. And today we are focusing on how you can thrive in every cell of your life and every day of your life and how you can ripen and heal and regenerate and flourish to every single day all the way through. And we are here with an incredible example of what can happen when you care for your body and care for your mind and care for your heart and care for your life day in and day out. Because I am so privileged to work in Food Revolution Network with my dad and colleague, John Robbins, who's been a leader in this food revolution movement for decades. And today I'm gonna to be interviewing him. He interviews a lot of people in our Food Revolution Summits, but I don't think I've ever actually gotten to interview him before. And today we're gonna to get that opportunity in this action hour. And we're gonna talk about healthy aging, vibrant vitality, how we can transform our lives and our very understanding of what it means to grow into our wisdom years with vibrancy and joy. And uh, just let me make one thing clear. This is not medical advice. We are sharing coaching and education and our own best insights. And always, of course, for any medical issues, be sure to consult with a qualified healthcare professional and use your own best judgment for your own care and needs. Now that said, we're about ready to go rolling here. Let me clarify also that Whole Life Action Hours are a project of Whole Life Club which is an ongoing membership community that Food Revolution Network has launched. We have over 5,000 members now, and the response to this community since we launched it in September has been extraordinary. People are getting incredible results, and the whole goal is about helping you apply healthy living so you can optimize and finesse and sustain your healthy habits for life. <clears throat> so at the end of this action hour, we'll be sharing more about how you can join in. There is a special massive discount opportunity available for a few more days. So make sure to stay with us to the end so you can hear all about how you can get in on this and make it work for you. We're going to be answering a lot of questions. First, I'm going to share some questions I've got from my dad, some of them he's never heard before. And we're also going to be uh, responding to a lot of the questions that have come in from Whole Life Club <clears throat> members in our community. So, all right, all that said, let me jump in here and share a little bit about this man we are with today. Over the last 31 years, my dad's books about healthy eating and healthy living, including the blockbuster bestseller, Diet for a New America, have sold millions of copies. They've been translated into more than 30 languages. He's made hundreds of local and national radio and television appearances and international. He's spoken in person to hundreds of thousands of people. He founded EarthSave International. He's a, received more awards than I can count on behalf of healthy people and a healthy planet and the work he's been doing to better the world for all of us. And he serves as president and co-founder with me of Food Revolution Network. He's a luminary, he's an inspiration to millions, and now he's with us. Welcome to my dad, John Robbins. Well, thank you, Ocean, and, and welcome to you, too. <laughs> thank welcome you to all so of our, our audience, all of our viewers and listeners. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> all right. So, um, you know, we're talking a little bit about aging and maturing and what's possible for human beings as the years go by. And you actually wrote a book about this, uh, Healthy at 100, where you studied the, the habits and the life experiences of the world's healthiest and longest lived peoples. Uh, this was back before Dan Buettner's work on the topic with the Blue Zones. And you came to many of the same conclusions that Dan actually uh, came to in that, in that work. But I'd love to hear, because I'm not sure a lot of our viewers right now haven't actually read Healthy at 100, as you were researching it, which really started just from your own passion to understand. You didn't say, I'm gonna write a book. You said, I wanna understand this. And then it turned into a book that inspired a lot of people. As you were on that learning journey, what did you discover that surprised or inspired you? Well, we have in this culture, pretty, a pretty dark and I would even say twisted view of what's possible as we get older. 
we look around, we see most of the older people in our culture not doing so well. They have a lot of illness. They don't feel good. They may be depressed. They may feel useless. They may feel valueless. There's something about our way of thinking about aging in our society that makes women in particular feel invisible and question their value. And we, we tend to push old people aside and we don't want to understand what is possible for us personally and for us as a culture in terms of getting older. And what I looked for is the cultures in the world that are exemplars of the healthiest aging, where the people live the longest and healthiest lives. It's not enough just to live to an old age if you're decrepit, if you're, if, if you're senile. That's yeah. not the goal. Yeah. Um, and so I looked to find out where are the people in the world, and Dan Buehner did this later with the Blue Zones, and we found the same people, uh, basically. And we found the same characteristics of these people. It's tried and true. And I think it's important for those of us who want to live healthy lives and want to live positive lives, want to live joyful lives, want to live lives of service and cre creativity and confidence and calm, calm and peace. We, under the circumstances that are unfolding in this world, it's not so easy. But if we want to do that, it's really important to know that there are exemplars, there are people we can look to for not so much because we live in a sort of different world, exactly following their ways of life. We don't wanna become exactly like them. We have to be who we are. But there are qualities and characteristics of their lifestyles and they're in common in different places on the planet where the people live the healthiest and longest lives. And I think we can learn from those people. What are the, you know, they're very different parts of the world that the people you studied live in, um, but they have certain things in common. And uh, you, you identified a few, I think four, or maybe it was five that they have in common in all of these different places. And could you tell us briefly uh, what, what those are? Well, one of them actually is they have a different attitude about aging. Yeah. Um, in our culture, people often lie about their age. And when they do, they almost always lie downwards. So they say they're younger than they actually are. And that's because we value younger people more than older people. And people wanting to put their best foot forward or make a good impression or be seen in a particular way uh, and not be treated like an old fogey or whatever, um, will lie downward. They, they, they say a number that, that isn't accurate, but is, but is more in keeping with how they want to be seen. In yeah. these cultures, people will lie about their age, but they lie upward. They say a higher number. And the reason is because in their society, the, the older you are, the greater respect you have, uh, the, the greater status you have, the more people that will tend to listen to what you have to say. There is an understanding that with age can come wisdom. And younger people have a tremendous sense of respect for their elders. We don't have that in our society. That is So having an attitude, people in those societies, as, as they're aging, look forward to aging. They, they don't dread it the way we tend to. They don't think of it as a bad thing. They, they actually think of the possibilities. Now, we live in a culture that doesn't surround us with those kinds of thoughts, but we can have those thoughts. We can choose our attitude. We can look forward to what is possible for us in terms of healthy aging and in terms of our wisdom years and not buy into the cultural BS. So that's yeah. one thing. And another thing is they eat a healthy diet. They don't eat processed foods. They don't eat refined sugars. They don't eat any of the packaged foods that we fill up the middle of our supermarkets and are, make up most of the calories in the American diet. They also eat very few animal products and those they eat are from animals that, that, that roam around and, and have space and not factory farmed creatures, not industrial meat or animal products at all, ever, zero. And they exercise a lot, it's just part of their lifestyle. They, they move around a lot and, and they, they celebrate. They have communal relationships in which they take joy and which they feel valued and in which they feel part of, of their culture, part of their families, part of other people. And they know that they're of service and value to those other people. So that's what they've got going for them. We, we need in our society to create as much of that 
as we can. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk about the attitudinal side for a second. I mean, because because actually that's one of the things some people say, oh, vegetarians, you know, don't live longer. It just feels like it. In other words, the, the message being, you know, time flies when you're having fun and when you're not eating enjoyable foods, there's not a lot of fun to be had and life sort of drags on, right? And that's one of the fears people have about a whole foods plant-based diet. For some people, the most pleasure they have in their lives is their taste buds, especially people who don't have a lot of uh, other pleasure. They, they may sit a lot and have a lot of aches and pains. And as they age, that tends to deteriorate. In, in some kind of bizarre cruelty, we also find that elderly people have less taste bud functionality as well. Um, so even that last vestige of pleasure often is stripped away from people in later years. Um, and so a lot of folks I know don't really want to get old. I mean, the idea is you want to fight it, right? <laughs> is there some other story about aging that, is, that acknowledges that the body goes through stages and changes and that, that, that lives into them uh, not just with the goal that we stay as young as possible, but like what are, what are the blessings that are possible in the wisdom years and how can we inhabit them in a way that maximizes pleasure and minimizes suffering? Well, I do want to fight, but I don't want to fight aging itself. That's a losing battle. I want to fight the cultural beliefs that tell me, that tell all of us that aging is a disaster that your body is going to disintegrate, your mind is going to get, is going to deteriorate, you're likely to get dementia, you're going to feel awful. Um, yeah. That way of thinking, I want to fight completely because it sells us so short. And when we live healthy lives, when we make healthy choices, when we live in, in accord with our life purpose, with our the guidance we get from our higher selves, from our inner wisdom, from... If, if we are believers in it and um, from God, the, the clarity that comes and the confidence and, and the calm that can come when we're living true to our purpose and, and making healthy choices, that leads to a different kind of aging. That leads to a completely different kind of aging in which there's a lot of joy, in which there's a lot of pleasure. I mean, the pleasure of living in a healthy body, your eyes are clearer, they see colors better, the colors are richer. Your taste buds don't deteriorate as you get older, as they do. They may a little bit, but not nearly as much. So you still taste food and enjoy it. And the pleasure of eating uh, an apple, the pleasure of eating some blueberries, the pleasure of eating uh, fresh vegetables is greater when you're filled with joy and confidence and clarity and good feelings about yourself and about your life than any substitute pleasure, the, the false pleasures, the short-term pleasures that, that the food industry gets us addicted to. And a lot of us have had our taste buds hijacked by those ultra processed foods full of salt and sugar and fat and artificial colors and artificial fragrances and all kinds of other chemicals designed to make us addicted to those foods. And we get addicted to, to them just as surely as people can get addicted to cocaine or heroin uh, yeah. or fentanyl. And with as disastrous, um, though maybe a little bit more protracted long-term uh, consequences. So the pleasures, the joys, the happiness of living in a healthy body and, in, and having a healthy mind are so much greater than the pleasures of living in an unhealthy body and having only some uh, refined foods that are full of these chemicals and additives to try to use them to make life worth living when you don't really feel it is much anymore. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think, I, I don't even understand how people can think that the pleasure of ice cream, for example, and I obviously have a lot of history with that. Um, You're an expert compare, on that. Can compare. <laughs> To, to the pleasure of, of health, the, the, the joys and pleasures and sensuality of living in a healthy body. Yeah. Let's talk about food for a second because that's well, maybe more than a second, but let's go, <laughs> let's focus on food now because that's obviously an area of great attention in your life and journey. 
Um, and specifically, what I want to ask you is, um, are there particular foods that somebody who is, let's say they're in the middle of their life and they're, you know, looking at how they're going to age and mature in the years to come. And they're thinking about what foods in particular will be most beneficial for their brain health, for their skin, for their overall uh, vitality and well-being. And, and are there particular foods that somebody in the, say, the second half of life might want to emphasize? Yes, fruits and vegetables, fresh produce, the stuff you can find at a farmer's market easily, um, especially green ones, green leafy vegetables, but all the colors really uh, of fruits and vegetables. And also um, legumes, beans in particular, split peas also, lentils also have been shown. This is one of the characteristics, all of the healthiest peoples in the world, all the cultures where we see and have documented and know that there is the healthiest aging, the, the longest lifespan, the longest health spans. All those people eat beans every day or some other legume every day. And we see that um, people who eat beans, the studies show in our society regularly, live at least five years longer than those who don't. Um, also seeds and nuts seem to play a role. And of course, whole grains, if you can tolerate them, and never refined grains. You know, the white flour and the white sugar foods, they've got to go. Um, the processed foods with lots of names of chemicals on the package, those got to go. And, and the good foods are fruits and vegetables first, and, and then whole seeds and nuts and beans and mushrooms and whole grains, and particularly green leafy veggies. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's yes. pretty much, uh, that's a common list that we hear for a lot of things. And, the, you know, I, I, we interviewed Dr. Dean Ornish recently, of course, um, for the Food Revolution Summit and some other events we were doing. And his, he, he and his wife wrote Undo It, which focuses on the, the core principles that he identified for fighting heart disease that turn out to also fight prostate cancer and dementia and a whole range of other issues. So I, I sometimes reflect that when you feed your body the right foods, it kind of helps with everything. Um, and we also know that with aging, certain nutrient needs shift a little bit. Um, and so I'm curious, what are some of the nutrients that are most important for seniors? Um, and how can we be sure we get enough of them? Well, once you reach the age of 60, your protein needs do increase a little bit. So you wanna be sure you're getting enough, but you don't need to get a ton. And you want to be sure, it's, it becomes increasingly important as you get older, that your protein comes from plant sources rather than from animal sources. Um, there are a lot of reasons for that. Uh, the data are pretty convincing. They're, they're really conclusive at this point that plant, pro you know, we used to think that animal proteins were superior. They were more complete. Um, that is old thinking that has been basically discounted now by medical research. Uh, we know that it's the plant proteins that are the healthiest ones and the ones you most need. You also um, want to be sure to get enough vitamin B12 and vitamin D3. Those particular vitamins are really important as you get older. Um, they are throughout your life actually as well, but as you get older especially. Um, and people sometimes worry about B12, can you overdose? There is no accounting of any overdose of vitamin B12 in medical history. Now there are people who have injected very large amounts of B12 on a daily basis directly into their bloodstream. And people have taken, the, you know, in the course of it's been used as a treatment for certain conditions. And people have taken mega doses of B12. Whether they got value from that, it depends on the condition they were treating, but no toxicity. Um, so you don't ever have to worry about taking too much B12, but you do have some concern about taking too much D3. It's a different story there. And the way you know if you're getting enough D3 or if you're getting enough um, B12 is, is with the B12, it's recommended that you take 1,000 um, micrograms a day as you get older. Um, that will ensure that you get enough. Um, you can also take 5,000 um, micrograms once a week, 
but I think the daily is, is better. Um, with the D3, it isn't so much, I can't so, so much tell you how much to take as how much you want to have in your bloodstream, what, you're, what you want. You can easy, it's, it's an easy blood test. You want to be between 40 and 80, roughly, nanograms per milliliter. That's how the test is, is assessed. Um, and for some people, that's around 2,000 IUs a day, maybe a little bit more in the winter. Um, if you're out in the sun a lot, it, you, you will probably need less. If you're out in the sun a lot and you're a younger person, you may not even need to take any supplementary D3. But as you get older, you need more. Your body isn't quite as efficient at metabolizing it. The blood test is the indicator whether you're getting the right amount. Um, but if you don't have access to a blood test, that you can find them online. They're pretty simple and they're cheap. Um, you want to be, again, between 40 and 80. Yeah, and uh, the vitamin D blood test, most doctors can prescribe it, but you can also, um, the vitamin D council has a simple yes. home kit you can send in and uh, it's just a little pinprick. It's pretty simple to do. And then you get a reading from them as well. And you can Google the vitamin D council online and they have a lot of good information on vitamin D as well. Um, well, thank you for that. Um, now let's turn to focus a little bit on fitness. And let me say a word here um, for those who don't know, my dad is uh, a pretty fit guy. We, we, we uh, used to run together. We ran marathons together starting when I was 10. And then uh, as the years went by, he shifted his focus to more using uh, weights at the gym, focusing more on the upper body. And um, we've been working out together. Well, he works out two or three times every single week for in a very serious fashion, let's say. <laughs> he really goes for it. And, um, and I join in most of those workouts and I, I love it. Uh, one of the things I've always been struck by is, uh, I mean, he's, he's phenomenally fit at, at 71. He's doing stuff that most folks can't do in their 20s. Um, and quite honestly, uh, we compete on a, almost everything because that's our, our style. And, uh, you know, he's still beating me on almost everything, which is driving me nuts now that I'm uh, 45. And we're, we're like, what, at 80? Are we still going to be in this boat, you know, <laughs> when I'm 80 and he's 106. But uh, in any case, because <laughs> I've been expecting to pass him for about 15 years now, any day, and he just keeps getting stronger, believe it or not. He's literally setting personal records. Um, but one of the things that inspires me, I'll just uh, say this to you, um, you, you, you go in full out, you, you play fully, and you don't hold back. Um, and not just don't hold back, you, you actually have a special gear, I think, that's reserved for competition with me, um, <laughs> where you, you go beyond anything anyone could have imagined you were capable of doing just for those special occasions. And I'm curious how you have honed that groove. A lot of people struggle just to show up at the gym at all. And there's something about the foot on the gas kind of acceleration of totality that you bring that is actually pretty um, ecstatic. I mean, it's, it's agonizing too, I know, <laughs> but, but it's also ecstatic. And it, it strikes me that, that in all physical endeavors, if our goal is to show up and do it, then there's, it's almost like a part of us is on, has a foot on the brake. We are pushing against some kind of resistance and we're just gonna force ourselves into it. And sometimes it takes that to get going. You know, when a rocket ship takes off, the first six feet uses an enormous amount of energy, right? Um, but then as it gets going, it builds momentum. And I think that working out is like that. And you're kind of like a rocket ship that's blasted off thoroughly at this point that you just, you just have that groove and you go for it. Uh, and I think for all of us, we wanna find that groove because then it's ecstatic and it's fun and we are fully in. Uh, but for those who are earlier in the journey, how do you connect with that possibility? Well, first of all, with weightlifting and, and, and any kind of resistance training, um, the more consistent you are, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And the pain ratio, the amount of pain subsides, it decreases greatly when you are in a regular routine and the pleasure increases. So the more you do it, the pleasure to pain ratio just grows and grows and grows. And eventually there isn't any pain. Um, there's soreness if you work out real hard, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, and the pleasure, the ecstasy is great. But how you get started when, when you haven't, when you're not doing it regularly, 
I was been thinking while you were asking this question, Ocean, and I'm remembering how much fun we have, um, of how I got started originally. And there is a saying in the military, uh, particularly in the Marines, uh, embrace the suck, where you, you go towards, you welcome what's difficult or challenging, or, or um, but, but, but what's in your best interests to do so that you can become who you wanna be. And I had polio as a kid. I was in a wheelchair, as you know, for a while. I had a very severe limb. I, I had real difficulty walking, much less running. And I really wanted to see how much of that I could regain, how much of the mo mobility and use of my legs I could regain and my lungs. And so I worked at it and it was hard. Um, and I did, as you mentioned, become a marathon runner eventually. But I had to do a lot of running to get there. And at first, it was really hard. It was much, much harder for me than it was for other people because of the polio. If I had allowed that fact, that it was so much harder for me than it was for others, to create apathy in me, to create resignation in me, to create um, any type of of, of um, acquiescence um, to the prognosis that the doctors had given me, which was that I'd have to live with this the rest of my life. Um, I would never have become who I've become. I would have never developed the mental qualities that I have because yeah. we're, we're, our body minds are linked and when we're healthy and we're fully active, our minds are also. There used to be a belief, by the way, and not that long ago, that they were in con uh, conflict. And the person who became very physically active, an athlete or um, someone who, who just spent a lot of time uh, working with their body um, would, cut, would lose some of their brain cells. <laughs> that that it was a, there was a limited amount of energy. And if you went, went into the physical, it wasn't available for the mental or the spiritual. That was a belief. Yeah. Um, it's not true. The brain cells regenerate. We don't have a limited amount. They regenerate constantly. And they do, the, that regeneration process does slow down as we get older, but it slows down less when we're physically active. And particularly when our muscle to fat ratio is higher. What you don't wanna have is a low muscle to fat ratio where you've got a lot of fat and not much muscle. That's a recipe for chronic disease. That's a, re a recipe for a lot of illness. Um, and I learned that from the data. And I wanted also to develop my muscle to fat ratio as I got older. So I've done it. And, and the, when, you're, when it's hard, I mean, I still have days that feel like slugging through molasses. Um, but there are other days when I feel like there's a wind in my back or the wind under my wings or I'm, I'm lifted by life. Um, and... When you make healthy choices, what happens is those easy to easier days become more frequent and easier. And the harder days, there's still some, but they become less frequent and they become less difficult. Yeah. But you need to embrace them. You need to accept, okay, I don't feel like it today. And I'm going to do it anyway because I know it's in my best interests. Because I know this is how I will feel better. This will give me the joy and the confidence, the vitality and the sense of beauty in my being. This will connect me, not just with my body, but with my soul, with my desire to live the healthiest and most positive life that I can. And this will put me into alignment with my life purpose and with my capacity to give from a cup that is full rather than from a cup that is empty. Um, Alexa said, if you've never been that active, is there a way to turn that around? And I know you're yeah. addressing this, but specifically, if someone has been pretty, you know, pretty um, sedentary for a long time, and they're wanting to shift that, what's the first step to take? To get off your butt <laughs> yeah, and move in whatever way feels good to you. And maybe do some yoga, maybe do some other form of, uh, maybe get some massages or body work and start moving, walking around. Walking is generally the first exercise and 
walk wherever you, you're comfortable. Some people don't have sidewalks where they feel safe. Some people don't, particularly the elderly, may not feel um, fully confident in walking in public. Um, then walk, then, then join a gym. There are, are, are machines you walk on uh, that are, that are in, in an enclosed space that are safe. Um, they have handrails. Um, so if you feel a little uh, dizzy, you, can, you won't fall. Um, start with whatever works for you, but do it every day. Do something every day, and if possible, increase each day a little bit, if possible. And if you, you get feedback from your body that this isn't working, tune in to see, is that feedback just the resistance, the inertia, the habit of being sedentary, kind of groaning about the new thing that you're doing? Or is it a, the wisdom of your body saying this particular exercise isn't the one for you? And you just have to learn to sense that and maybe try it out a little bit more and see what happens. Um, but the important thing is to do it and to do it gradually and consistently. And every day, if possible, do a little bit more. Now we have, there's all these uh, fitness tracking devices these days, uh, Fitbit and so forth that people use. And a lot of times they're based on the idea of 10,000 steps being the goal per day. That's about five miles. There's absolutely nothing magical about that number, despite the fact that these devices will posit it as, as the goal. And a lot of people think that's the goal. And if you can do, take 10,000 steps a day, great. I'm not putting that down. I'd probably take more than that most days. Um, but that shouldn't be the goal. And it's interesting how that number became part of our thinking. Uh, and, and part of our devices, so so embedded that way. And it actually came from a, a J Japanese company in the 1960s that developed a pedometer, uh, a device that people could wear and it would measure the number of steps they took. And they wanted to sell it. And the character in Japanese for 10,000 looks a little bit like a person walking. So they named the thing the Japanese word for 10,000 steps, because uh, it made it look, it had a little logo that looked like a person walking. And out of that, gradually, this belief spread uh, that has no medical basis at all, that, that 10,000 steps is the goal. There is not a numerical goal. Depends on your condition. It depends on the shape you're in. And, and, uh, so, and you can get, if you've been sedentary, that's out of the question. You shouldn't try for that. And if you if feel bad because you're not doing that much, forget it. Because even 1,000 steps, even 500 steps if you've been sedentary a day is helpful. And in fact, we have studies now that have recently come out. One published just this week in the Journal of the American Medical Association where they took middle-aged women at, who, who took 10,000 steps or 8,000 steps or 6,000 steps or 4,000 steps, all, the, all these numbers, and they measured the impact on a lot of their, their physical markers, biomarkers, and, and also on their rate of death over the course of the study. And they found that, yes, people who did 2,000 steps a day were much healthier than people who did none. People who did 4,000 were a little bit healthier than 2,000. People that did 6,000 were a little healthier than four, but those little amounts were decreasing as you went up. And it really depends on your individual circumstances. If you, if you, if you try to reach a goal that's too high, you're, you're, doing, you're selling yourself short. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so um, I, I just want to add a couple other things that might be useful if you're trying to get going with that fitness routine. One is uh, a schedule, regularity, actually putting it in your calendar. Some people like to work out or do some activity before or after work on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or whatever it may be for you. Uh, another thing that's helpful is having peers or comrades. Um, definitely when we work out together at the gym, we both go to another level because we're being witnessed, <laughs> but also it's something on the calendar that then we're accountable for. And it's a lot easier to show up when someone else is showing up and you got to meet them. So whether it's a, a walking group or a regular hike or, 
or a gym experience or going swimming together or all kinds of activities, you can do things with somebody else. And if you can get a buddy, it helps increase your success likelihood. And then also things that you can eventually find pleasure in will really be helpful. So maybe having some music playing, even in headphones while you're working out or doing an activity or some people find aerobics or you know, jazzercise classes. There's all kinds of different activities you can do that light you up, that feel fun or exhilarating to you. And it may be hard at first, but if you can see a light at the end of the tunnel where you're like, oh, I could really enjoy that, that's helpful. And if you have any kind of groove in your history, that can help too, because your body will remember probably for lifelong, some of what you learned. So even if you haven't exercised in a long time, if there was something you did enjoy once, that can be great. Another uh, thing a lot of people find helpful is dancing. I know I personally love dancing, whether it's just putting on some music and rocking out while I'm doing the dishes and I do a little extra shimmy in the middle of it, uh, or I actually go to you know dance, dance events with other people. And for me, that, that's where exercise becomes ecstatic. That's where my body comes alive. And I'm not saying, oh, I have to lift my arm 10 times. I'm just in it. So any ways that you can find joy or pleasure will help to light you up and, and make it richer for you. But as my dad said, start slow and small, especially if you've been sedentary for a long time. Recently, I hadn't, I hadn't gone running for quite a few years and I wanted to start running again. And my body remembered how to run fast and far. But when I started to do that, my knees started to scream because they weren't ready for that because they were out of shape. So I had to do like a little bit, you know, like a few blocks the first day and then my knees could handle that. And then I did a little bit more and I, I did, I just tried for a couple of weeks doing a little bit more every day. And by the end of that, I could go farther than I could at the beginning in pain, but now I was not in pain and I was building that confidence. So, you know, that's just one example of how, even if you've done a lot in your life, when you're out of shape, you need to kind of start slow and, and titrate up. You know, we've been talking about um, people who might be sedentary or have been sedentary and haven't moved very much. Yeah. Um, and, and that's important. For those of us who have been moving and are active, you know, the sky is kind of the limit. There, there has been a belief that as you get older, um, you need to slow down. Maybe that's true in some ways, but we have overestimated how much truth there is in that. And we've sold our vision downwards of what we can do as we get older. Um, there are many examples now of people doing remarkable things at ages where we would have thought that would have been impossible. And you, you don't have to set a world record. You don't have to compete with the people who are doing absolutely astounding things. But if you kind of compete with your own possibility, your own potential, just to achieve it, to be the strongest, the healthiest, the most vibrant, the most alive person you can be, um, that will increase your joy. And also it'll increase your mood uh, a whole lot. I mean, the studies on depression and exercise are amazing. Uh, exercise is more effective in treating almost every type of depression than any of the antidepressant drugs. And the side effects are all positive, whereas the side effects with those drugs are not. The costs are negligible, whereas the costs of those drugs are considerable. And the value of doing this, of moving and, and enjoying your life and enjoying your body as you get older is incalculable. Yes. Thank you. We've got a lot of questions, so I'm going to see if we can get a little rapid fire to a bunch of them here. Um, Lydia asked, how do you personally stay focused and inspired in the healthy life you've chosen? Do you have any obstacles that cause you to regroup occasionally? And how do you go about refocusing? Oh, of course I have obstacles in my life because, and I need to regroup and refocus. And um, But I've done it a lot by it. I mean, I have refocused a lot. There've been a lot of times when I felt I was knocked down um, and I got up. There are some people you knock them down once and they stay down. There are other people get knocked down eight times, they get up nine. I don't know what it is exactly that distinguishes those two groups of people other than that fact of, of that. 
But when you make it a habit of getting up, getting focused, getting al aligned with your higher purpose, getting active, getting healthy, making choices that feed your soul, that, that bring you joy, um, that enhance your creativity and your clarity and your ability to be calm in difficult situations. When you do those kinds of things regularly, it actually gets easier to do them. And so now when I get knocked down, my habit is to get back up. Um, when things are hard for me and I feel sluggish and, and unclear mentally and, and even confused and po possibly depressed a bit, which is about as depressed as I get, I, I know that getting active and doing the good things and choosing the healthy lifestyle will soon make me feel better. And I do it. I do it soon. I embrace, if it's difficult, I embrace the suck. Yeah. I don't think I've heard that phrase before, but I'll remember it. <laughs> there is yeah. a place for it's that. It's kind of a it's kind of a, a gross way of putting it, but it comes yeah. from the military, and and these are guys who have to do things that aren't so easy, and this is how they get in great shape. Well, leaning into what's hard rather yeah. than leaning away from it, I think. Yeah. Is of that. Yeah. Yeah. Saying yes, embracing the possibilities. And embracing even the difficulties that are inherent in reaching those possibilities. Yeah, that's right. Ardith asked a question I'll answer um, about anti inflammatory foods and which ones are most anti inflammatory. So, um, we actually wrote an article about this recently in Food Revolution Network uh, on our blog. And as we were researching, these are what that some that stood out raw cacao has over 300 enlivening compounds, many of which are powerfully anti-inflammatory. It has 20 times the antioxidant power of blueberries, and it's packed with vitamins and minerals. Um, and I'm not talking here about Mars bars. For the optimal benefits, actually, we're talking here about raw cacao with a minimal amount of sugar, but it can be delicious, and you can even add it to smoothies. Acai berries are a powerful anti-inflammatory. Uh, and they also speed up your body's metabolism. Um, leafy greens, uh, studies have demonstrated that uh, crucifers in particular um, are powerful in helping bring down inflammation in your body. You can uh, eat them uh, steamed or in soups or raw. Um, maca is a South American root that's been used for thousands of years. Um, and it's often consumed as a powder and it's been shown to have potent antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. And then turmeric is phenomenal. There are thousands of studies showing the anti-inflammatory and health boosting powers of turmeric and particularly the, the primary um, active ingredient in turmeric is curcumin. Uh, it's extraordinary in bringing down inflammation and it also helps in fighting diabetes and high cholesterol and depression and heart disease and cancer. And then there's also ginger, which is incredible. And it's been helpful with migraine headaches, with rheumatoid arthritis, with osteoarthritis um, and general inflammatory conditions. And then omega-3 fatty acids, which are also great for brain health in general but, and, and cardiovascular health and regulating your mood and balancing your hormones and preserving the integrity of every cell in your body. And uh, so you can get omega-3s, of course, DHA and EPA. We talk about this a lot from algae sourced supplements. Um, and then ALA, which your body can use to produce EPA and DHA is abundant in chia seeds and flax seeds in particular. My dad loves to grind up chia and flax seeds in a coffee grinder and then sprinkle them onto all sorts of things every day. Um, now I wanna uh, ask a question from Bill who said, like so many other members, I wanna thank you for your lifelong efforts to bring health to many. When you find someone you respect who's eating the standard American diet, who is overweight and suffering, do you remain quiet or do you speak out? The more I know, the more I wanna speak and yet I know I need to hold my tongue, otherwise it comes across as judgmental and condescending, which will not be helpful. Any thoughts on how to support people who may be harming themselves? Boy, that is a question I live with a lot. Thank you for that. Um, I think there is a way to speak that doesn't come across as judgmental um, or condescending or patronizing because it's based in our love for that person. 
and our respect for their ability and right to make any choices they want. Um, and at the same time, knows that there are things that are possible for them if they make possibly different choices than they're, they're habitually connected to and they believe in. And out of our love for them, we want them to live healthy lives. We want them to, to live beautiful lives. We want them to be around uh, because we care about them. And if they can feel the underlying love in the message, if they can feel the underlying respect for them as autonomous people mm, yeah. in the underlying message, the, the subliminal message, they'll respond very differently than if they sense underlying contempt or disdain or judgment. And they will pick up whatever the underlying and emotional energy is. Yeah. And so you need to look at yourself and say, how can I talk to this person about what I believe in, what is working for me, what I've learned, what I know, and what I want for them in a way where they feel respected right, right through the whole time, even if they don't take the ideas or suggestions I'm, I'm offering them. My love does, if my love wavers, if my love is conditional, if my respect for them is conditional on them doing what I would love to see them do, and I believe deeply, and the science is very strong about this, that they would have a healthier and happier life. But if my love is conditional or my respect is conditional on them making those better choices, they'll feel that. And they will probably stay in their resistance to it. Um, and that I think is the secret. And how we learn to communicate things that we know with great passion, with also great respect for those who may not see it the same way. That's an art form. I'm still working on it. I've been working on it for a long time. I got a long ways to go on that one. I think all of us are working on that. And, and if you get any ideas about it, if anyone gets any ideas of what's been successful, let us all know. Thank you. A couple other quick tips. You can uh, ask for, invite, uh, invite curiosity. So for example, hey, I just learned about whatever, would you like to know more? You know, you can even explicitly say, I don't want you to feel like I'm trying to shove something down your throat, but I'm excited about something I've been learning. And I wonder if you'd like to hear about it. You can give people a book. You don't have to be the expert. Give people a book, give people access to something like the Food Revolution Summit or some of the resources from Food Revolution Network or my book, 31 Day Food Revolution or any of my dad's books or books from our speakers. And uh, just put a little post-it note on there. Like, I thought of you on page 71 or page you know, 216, uh, some spot that you think particularly might pertain to them. And I'll bet you they will open to that page if nothing else. Uh, so you don't have to always be the expert to connect them with expertise, to open doors and share with them. Um, I'll ask, answer this next one from Tony who said, I work as a psychotherapist. I see a lot of younger people these days with health issues, obesity, prediabetes, sexual issues, sleep issues, not knowing how to deal with stress, et cetera. And their doctors are saying nothing to them about their diets. Any ideas how to address this? Well, Tony, I would say because you're a psychotherapist and they're obviously in some way in your practice, then that may be a doorway is to say, hey, you know what? One of the ways that I wanna support you in your mental health, in your emotional health, in your spiritual health, whatever it is that you're focusing on with them is your physical health because it underlies a lot of how you feel. And you can talk about the role of exercise and diet in supporting and in creating the conditions for life to feel better. You know. We all wanna focus on the half full side of the glass or however much it is. And there's a lot of science showing that what we appreciate appreciates. And a lot of times in psychotherapy, there's focus on how we can create the conditions to make the best of what we've got. Um, and with healthier eating, you actually make the glass fuller. You actually create the conditions for more vibrancy, more vitality, more well-being, and more emotional and mental health. So, um, so that's maybe a doorway from where you're coming from because you're wanting to help people presumably to be happier, to be healthier, to be more vibrant, to be more resilient. And so maybe you can share you know, from that vantage point how it ties into what they came to you for. Um, we heard from Rhonda, I'll ask my dad to address this one. She said, my mom who's 79 is coming to stay with me for three months. 
My husband and I adopted a whole food plant-based diet and we plan to introduce her to that and hope she'll adopt it for herself as she is overweight and sedentary due to pain in her hips and shoulders. Any special consideration for adopting a plant-based diet at her age? Well, thank you for that question, Rhonda. Um, she's 79 and she's sedentary and she's overweight and she's got these, these problems. If she could lose some weight, some of those problems would be less. She probably knows that. Um, she probably is addicted to or very, very deeply <laughs> habituated to eating foods that are contributing to that weight gain and that she likes. So the challenge, I think, is to feed her some foods that she'll like just as much or almost as much, that she'll like a lot, that don't contribute to that weight gain and that actually provide her body with the nutrients that she really needs. So working on what you feed her, the, the berries and fresh fruit, and most people love those uh, flavors instead of whatever her desserts that she's used to eating are. Um, and yeah, you need to be a little more careful about her protein needs because of her age. You want to make sure she's getting enough and getting it from plant sources, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, your example is critical, that you're eating healthfully and that you're vibrant and enjoying your life and enjoying your food is important. Um, She's your mother. She's used to telling you what you should do and what's best for you. <clears throat> I don't know if she's still in that pattern at this age or not, but most mothers get into that kind of a track when they have little kids and, and the parents have to outgrow that too. Um, somehow. I don't know where she is in that, how, how open she is to learning from you. But if your example is one of, of, positive energy about what you're doing and what's possible for her, uh, you'll, you'll probably have the best results. And make her food that she'll like that's healthy. Um, work at that and please her. Make her know that her happiness is really important to you. Her well-being is really important to you. Her health is really important to you. Now you want her around. She's going to be there for three months. That's a while. You can actually make some real changes if she's willing in her lifestyle during that time, if she's willing. And the ultimate choices that she'll take from that are hers. And knowing that, you can create the, the optimum environment for her to make the best choices for herself. Yes, that's sweet. Thank you. Uh, Jerry asked how much of your meal planning revolves around raw and or cooked food, and do you consume many nuts and seeds, and what's your position on the value of food combining? Okay, those were three questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think I, I want to answer them all at once at first and then deal with them separately. There is such a thing as biochemical and metabolic individuality. And we are different. We have similarities, but we're each unique. And questions like how much raw food and how much cooked food, you have to sense for yourself how you feel best. Um, I have over the years experimented with a, a, a raw food diet for a long period of time. I got to a place where it didn't work for me. Um, so then I added more cooked foods in and I noticed as I did that, how that felt, it felt good. Um, and then I've come to a balance. I suppose at this point in time in my life, it, it varies with the seasons. Um, I suppose in, I don't make a practice of counting calories, but I suppose in the winter, 75% um, of my calories, maybe 80% come from cooked foods, the rest from uncooked from raw foods. Uh, but in the summer, I'm eating more salads. I'm eating more fresh, fresh foods, fresh fruits, just the way they are. Um, so the percentage of my calories coming from, from raw foods increases. But I don't have a number that's a goal. Um, just like with the number of steps I take or the amount of weight I lift in the gym. or it, it, It's doing what I can that feels the best and noticing that. And what was, feels best for me 
would be different than feels best for you or for someone else. Same thing with food combining. There are people who say, don't mix fruits and vegetables. There are, and other people do very well mixing them. You have to experiment and see what your body wisdom is telling you as you explore those things. And as far as seeds and nuts, again, some people thrive with a lot of them in their diet. Other people need smaller amounts. I think just about everybody, the data is pretty inconclusive on this, do better with some seeds in their diets and also some nuts, but particularly seeds. Um, it, flax seeds and hemp seeds in particular, chia seeds also very much, um, but sunflower seeds, sesame seeds as well, pumpkin seeds very much. And with the nuts, uh, walnuts, almonds are in particular, and pistachio nuts have very unique qualities. Um, you don't have to eat a lot of them. If you want to eat a significant amount, notice how you feel when you do. Um, they are fattening. Their, their cal caloric density is high, but their nutrient density is also high. So, um, and they have some nutrients, seeds and nuts, that aren't found in any other foods or are, aren't found in any appreciable quantity in other foods. So you want to get the whole spectrum of nutrients that your body needs, the whole symphony playing. Uh, that's how you're going to have the richest experience of your life. Thank you for that. Beautiful. Um, we are, uh, I'm going to address one more question and then we're going to move to the next phase of our time together. Um, this is from Larissa who said, I live in a country where, where we don't have the choice of organic fruits and vegetables from local markets. Is it better to eat apples, for example, with the skin or to peel them if they're not organic? Well, here's the thing, Larissa, there have been a lot of studies done on uh, diet patterns. And we see time and again, that people who eat more fruits and more vegetables fare better, including apples. And most of the fruits and vegetables, including apples in those studies were not grown organically because that's the reality of most of the food out there today. So um, I think we are in pretty good standing to say that eating apples is healthful for most people even if they're not growing organically. And of course, if you can go organic, that's particularly beneficial. And if you're concerned about pesticide use, and, and I understand why you would be, there's a lot of good reasons to be concerned about it. Um, my suggestion is to soak your apples, your non-organic apples, in, uh, about a, uh, in a baking soda water solution, about one tablespoon of baking soda per gallon of water. Stir that up and soak them for 15 minutes. And then you can take them out and rinse them, dry them off if you like, and then they're much safer to eat. That's been found to be the most effective way at removing pesticide toxicity. And I do think that apple skins have a lot of beneficial compounds in them and you're better off eating them cleaned up as I'm mentioning than, uh, than not. Um, so that's the, the high level on it. Of course, different apples are growing in different ways. I can't be certain about your particular apple source, but in general, that's, that would be my, the principle I would apply. Um, so now we're nearing the end of this time for our questions and answers session. And we're gonna make a little pivot um, because I wanna let you know if you are feeling inspired by what you're learning, if you're wanting to put it into action, if you're wanting to ground this, not just for a day or a week or a month, but for the long haul, for your whole life, then we've created a resource for you. And uh, my dad and I, have spent years, decades in fact, struggling with this question, how do we help more people do what they know? How do we help people get the results long-term? Because so many people know, okay, more vegetables, more fruits, more exercise, better healthier social relationships, but the world is overwhelming. Often it feels like you're having to fight an uphill battle just to do the right thing for your body. There are so many forces that drag us down that pull us into stress, into bad habits, into lethargy. And so we want to, we've been exploring, how can we create a wind at your back? How can we create that momentum that will sustain you and keep pushing you forward in bite-sized chunks that's easy and efficient and doable? And we created a program, it's called Whole Life Club, welcoming healthy organic lifestyle empowerment that's specifically designed for that purpose. And I want to tell you a bit about it now. And if you're already a member, you don't need to keep watching. And if you know you're not interested, you don't need to keep watching. But if there is a part of you that says, huh, I want to find out more, or I want to land this plane, or I want to make this happen in my life, then please stay with us for a little bit here so we can tell you more about this opportunity. And it is on a massive sale for a few more days until Monday night. 
And so if you are interested and if you like a good deal, then this is a great time to jump forward and say yes and take advantage of this limited time opportunity. So what's in Whole Life Club? Well, there are three major components. Number one is wisdom. Number two is recipes. And number three is community. When I say wisdom, every month we have a Whole Life Action Hour with a guest health revolutionary. And as a member, you get to submit questions for inclusion in those action hours plus transcripts and follow-up action checklists afterwards. And you get the entire library of all of our past action hours. There have been almost a dozen of them so far. And every month we have a theme for the whole month. It's like a mini course on that topic. And the action hour focuses on that theme. And then there are weekly action of the week videos where I give you a simple step you can take in a few minutes that will get you results and traction on your goals for that month. And then you also get a weekly action checklist. So that's the wisdom side. And then there's recipes, delicious, fabulous, whole foods, plant-powered recipes to help, you, to help you enjoy the cuisine and the flavor and the deliciousness of healthy eating day in and day out. And uh, actually, I, I've been amazed by how much people are loving the recipes. When we asked our members recently, what have you gotten most out of this program so far? There were a lot, people had a lot to say. But one of the things a lot of them talked about was how much they love the recipes and how wonderful it is to keep, uh, keep expanding their culinary horizons and discovering new foods that are so delicious and that are so nutritious. And then the third is community. It's having that network of support and relationships and discussion and chats and the opportunity to ask your questions and get answers from real people who are really on the journey, including from me and Anne Marie, who is uh, uh, the community coordinator for this program. She's right in there just engaging with folks. And the community is so vital and so beautiful. And it just means a lot, I think, especially when you have a tough time or fall off the wagon, so to speak, to have people to help pull you back. And also when you have a success, people have lost 30 pounds and they get to talk about it. And other people are like, yes, you know, more power to you. And that feeling is powerful. So those are the basic components. And let me ask my dad here, um, you know, when we launched this program, we didn't know how it was gonna go. Um, we're seeing these tremendous results. What, um, what, what inspires you to want to keep bringing Whole Life Club into the world? Somebody asked a question earlier. I, I'm sorry, I forgot who it was, their name, but about what do you say to people when you, when you see them and, and they aren't activating their highest health potentials and they aren't eating well and, and they're suffering as a result. And you know that if they ate more healthily and lived differently, they would be have a very different experience of themselves, a much more inspiring and beautiful and, and, and healthy one. What do you do? That's a question I live with every day. I think a lot of us do because we have relatives, we have friends, we have coworkers, we may have spouses, we may have children who don't, haven't yet seen the beauty that's possible for them. In a, in a healthy lifestyle. And getting the strength, knowing that there are other people who are working along with you and some of whom have been doing this for quite a while and they've learned a few things that can be useful to you as you move forward and become a living example uh, of what is possible. Because it's our example that is our message to others. What we say is important um, but what we do is what really matters. And they will notice. They're watching you. <laughs> and if you're, if you're increasing your joy and you're increasing your health and you're increasing your wisdom as you get older, they're gonna wanna want, they're gonna want what you have. And I like seeing it spread that way. And I've seen that when people join the Whole Life Club, they get the tools, they get the support, they get the wisdom and the recipes and the guidance and the community that enables them to become living examples in more powerful ways and to influence more people. And then it starts to become not just a personal choice, but a social phenomena with profound environmental implications, profound ethical implications, profound consequences to the state of the world, to what we're doing to this planet, to each other, to, to our, our, ourselves. And I want to be part of this movement growing. Mm. And so that's for me, the excitement. That's for me. And I'm seeing it happen. I'm seeing people who join the Whole Life Club 
to telling us that their experience is actually exceeding our expectations. Thank you. I'm, I love that. You know, it's the revolution really. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the transformation that we're all working for in different ways. And the personal is political and the individual connects to the systemic and our example doesn't just uh, influence us. It influences everyone we interact with. And so Whole Life Club is a means to help you be an embodiment of the food revolution and a stand for it in your life and also on our planet. So um, one of the things I've loved in the, in the last couple of weeks, I've, I've actually gotten to sit down and chat with a few of our members and interview them and hear how this experience has been for them. And one of them was Genevieve from Ontario, Canada. And she invited me to share a few of her words with you. So here's, here's our brief chat from a few days ago. We'll go ahead and roll it now. I'm Genevieve. I'm Genevieve in English. My friends call me Jen. I'm from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And where were you uh, in your life? Like, what were the challenges you were facing before you joined Whole Life Club and, and found connected with this body of work? So before uh, joining Whole Life Club, um, about maybe a year before that, um, my health was bad, my whole everything wasn't good. When I was 16, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism. And back in the late 90s, that was really rare. Uh, so I've been on this path to try to kind of get that resolved. And I saw a documentary on uh, veganism and how the industry, how it's uh, well, factory farming, which got me straight into veganism. Like I, I've been a vegan for two years now. And I struggled. I struggled to fit in with the crowds. I struggled to find meals. I struggled... I was alone. I felt really alone. So when I saw uh, the Food Revolution Summit, I was like, hey, people like me. And I was like, it's great. So I listened enthusiastically. And then that brought in more people and that linked me to other documentaries and all that stuff. And then I grew my knowledge. And then the whole life club came about. And I was like, this is great. This is like minded people who are supporting each other, whether they have taken that path to health or uh, they're looking to be on that path. So what I like about that is that there's a combination of the two people who can offer support and offer tips, but also people who are new that I can offer tips and support too. that I've been there and this is what I do. Maybe this will work for you. And of course I, I you know, uh, I absolutely enjoy your videos, your weekly videos. Uh, they're my, 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 pet, uh, my pep talks to keep me on that path. And to go back to your original question, um, my, my hypothyroidism, all the symptoms that I've had have gone away. Like I've reversed my hypothyroidism with the whole bucket list that comes along with that title in two years, I'm down to a quarter of the medication I used to take that I took for like 18 years. So that's why I love being part of this, this club because I know firsthand that when you change your diet, you change everything, all the ailments that you have, they go away. Wow, thank you. <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So uh, give me a snapshot of how your life is different with those symptoms uh, gone. How did, how, what, give me an example of some of the symptoms you were facing and what it's, how it's changed now. I, my, my biggest notice, it's really funny, but it's, it's hair. Like I, my hair was so thin, so dry, so brittle. Now I can grow long hair. I can, you know, I can be proud of my hair and not tie it back all the time. My nails, I couldn't grow nails for the life of me. And now I have to trim them every two weeks because they're so strong and so long that I'm scratching my daughter, you know, and it's, but it's, it's little subtle things like that, that you don't notice. And, and you, you're like, well, okay, I have hypothyroidism. I can't grow nails. My hair falls out. I'm constantly tired. I brain fog. Brain fog has to be the biggest one. Uh, it creeps up on you and you just learn to live with it. And you wake up one day and it's gone and you're like, wow. I feel smarter, you know, but you're not smarter. You're just not bombarded by all these chemicals that are disrupting your brain's 
normal way of functioning. So that helps me be a better mom. I'm more focused at work. I get better sleep, which cycles into having more energy. Uh, and it all starts with good food. If you join Whole Life Club, you will get the support that you need to be on the path to take control of your health. Well, there you have it. Thank you, Genevieve, so much for sharing those inspiring words with us, with our community, and for living your example. We hear stories like this all the time. You know, in her case, she's talking about hypothyroidism and hair and nails. Other people are talking about um, blood sugar levels or about excess weight or about uh, heart disease that reverses. Uh, in so many cases, the, the source of a lot of our ailments is food. And when we can apply these principles, and, and not just food, but lifestyle in general, to optimize our well-being, all kinds of mysterious ailments disappear. It's extraordinary um, when you get your body tuned up, how beautifully it can function. And Whole Life Club is really about helping you, yes, uh, to implement these kinds of changes and also to optimize them. So that maybe you've gotten part of the way there, but not all the way there. Maybe you lost 20 pounds, but you've got 10 more to go. Maybe you've you know, lost some weight, but you're still dealing with some brain fog. So we look at every month, there's another theme and we look at how you can move forward and make progress. For example, this coming month, we're focusing on brain health specifically, how you can fight Alzheimer's and dementia and have peak brain performance. Then month after that, month of July, we're focusing on gut health and digestion and, and your microbiome. A uh, month after that, we're probably gonna be focusing on energy and how you can have peak energy levels all day long. We're also gonna have a month focusing on blood sugar and balance and how you can really have healthy blood sugar levels. So each month has a theme and we have specific, simple bite-sized steps you can take to make tangible progress towards your health goals. And I think any one of these months could be enough to join the whole entire program if it's on a topic that's interesting to you, but the cumulative of it makes it life-changing. So we want to invite you to join in and we want to make it easy for you to join in. So right now, Whole Life Club is on a super sale and you can see it, uh, there's a link right from the broadcast page here. So you can go ahead and check it out if you want to. Right now it's on sale. So normally it's $29 a month or on sale right now, you can join in for $19 a month. Normally it's $247 a year, but on sale right now, just until end of day Monday, it's $127 a year. So this is a special opportunity in celebration of the recent Food Revolution Summit we completed and this series of action hours. We wanna help you take this next step and to make it easy as possible for you to say yes. So if something in your heart saying, yeah, I want this, then I wanna invite you to check it out, learn more, take advantage of this opportunity while the sale price is available. And remember there's a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you're kind of on the fence and you're like, oh gosh, I'm not totally sure, but you wanna lock in the discount sale price, now is your time to jump in while you can to get the discount, check it all out, get the entire library of content from the past instantly, and then step forward. Check out the recipes, check out the community. And if it's for you, then we'll be with you every step of the way on your whole life journey. So uh, we're gonna wrap up our time here in a moment. I wanna just invite my dad to share any closing words you'd like to add to our, to our gathering here today. Well, thank you, Ocean. I, I was moved by that testimonial. And um, she talked about brain fog lifting being the most important thing. And then there were these other, her, her hair and her nails improving. A lot of times people talk about their skin getting better. Um, these, these things we could call superficial, they're not because they're indicators of things going on elsewhere that we don't see that are also improving. And when the brain fog lifts, of course we feel better. Right? We think more clearly, we think more deeply, we think more positively, um, and we decrease significantly the odds that later in life we will get dementia or Alzheimer's. We decrease those, pro that, those odds massively. This is the little known fact. And when we focus next month in Whole Life Club on brain health, will make this very apparent to people because it's really important. Um, a lot of older people today are succumbing to dementia. It's not pretty. The whole family hurts with it. It's very costly on so many levels. It's not what you want as you get older and you don't have to get, have it. 
even if you have the genetic predisposition to it, even if you've been dealt that genetic card, the, the odds of you getting it are still massively decreased by eating well and, and other lifestyle measures that we'll talk about. So I, I'm here to say and that you can have a healthy life and it can be healthier than you probably have thought it could be as you get older. And you can have more vitality and joy and wellness and beauty in your wisdom years than you probably have ever imagined. And I wish that for you. I want that for you. Thank you. Oh, beautiful. You can have more vitality and joy in your wisdom years than you probably have ever imagined. Yeah, I want that for you too. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to my dad and colleague for decades of leadership in this food revolution. And we together welcome you, celebrate you on your path of health and vitality. We hope that this, this event and this community is of value to you. And if you're interested in stepping forward and taking the next step, please do check out Full Life Club and join in while this discount opportunity is available. We wish you vitality and joy and wellness and beauty and lots and lots of good healthy food. <clears throat> and uh, we're signing off now from this whole life action hour and looking forward to taking the next steps with you for vibrant, healthy, joyous, beautiful living day in and day out for many, many years to come. This is Ocean Robbins and John Robbins and the whole team of Food Revolution Network signing off from today and looking forward to moving forward together. When it comes to cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, heart disease, and other chronic illness, what really matters isn't how many books you read, how many webinars you attend, or how much you know. What really matters at the end of the day is what you eat and how you live. The science has given us what we need to know. Now it's time for action. It's time to implement and optimize your healthy lifestyle. It's time to get results. It's time to say goodbye to confusion and hello to clarity. It's time to say goodbye to bad habits and hello to good ones. It's time to fall in love with foods that love you back. It's time to join a community that will support you in achieving your goals. It's time for Whole Life Club. Click the link to find out more and to join in now.